With hundreds of new games released on the market each year, it's no surprise when you run across a few that are similar to one another, as at Gen Con 2023, when we had the debut of two cooperative party games that are all about thinking like one another. You have Trash Talk, where you have the head raccoon who is going to assign trash, so a slinky or this strange algae thing or a little honey stir, to words in secret. And then the other players see the words, try to assign the same objects to those words. And if they mess up, you get one more chance to do it again, do it successfully. You add another word. So now you're doing four words. You add another piece of trash, a coin or a bow tie, paper clip, whatever it is. Try to do it again and get up to 10 cards, identifying them all correctly. Ensemble works somewhat similarly. You have some image cards up top, kind of like Dixit style strange surrealistic images and one card on the bottom everyone's trying to choose the card on the top that matches the one on the bottom and you have a certain number of chances to do this you add one more card each round if you were perfectly on target or at a certain level just miss one and trying to get up to nine cards choosing all successfully well, yeah they're very similar well 2024 we have two other cooperative party games that are hitting the market that seem rather similar Hmm, they're all about locating things in the right places. Trying to think along the same lines as you're doing that. Maybe I'll do another video, video about landmarks separately. In short, you are given a certain setup on an island and one player is writing word clues to try to get people to put island tiles in the proper location to lead to the exit. Ideally, you're going to find treasures along the way. You can set personal goals to try to find X number of treasures before you can go to the exit to make the game more difficult and add more elements of play. So, Link City works a little differently, but it is somewhat similar in that you start with a tile. One player is going to add more tiles and you try to get other people to put their tiles in the same location that you would. And if you do, you'll grow a nice city and score points. That's it. You're trying to score the most points to win, but really you don't care about the points as you're playing. It's just about the strange situations that arise during the game. To set up Link City, place the City Hall tile on the table and assign someone as mayor for the first round. They take the City Hall screen. You then draw four of the 57 tiles from the box and place them around City Hall. We got a dive bar, mini golf, Chinese buffet, and 5G cell tower. We're starting oddly but we've got our town the player to the left of the mayor is deputy mayor they decide where we're going to authorize permits to build so we definitely want to build something between the mini golf and the dive bar and i guess mini golf 5g cell tower and off by the chinese buffet okay anywhere adjacent to an existing tile is fine the mayor then draws three more tiles at random places them behind the screen and then assigns tiles like these. So where are these tiles going to go? Uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. We're adding an alien abduction site to town along with a police station and a circus. Where are they going to go? Well, I've got ideas for where I think they should be. The deputy mayor and everyone else is now going to see whether we're on the same wavelength. So you assign one of these cones to each location. I will just do it randomly because you are not in the room with me. And then the mayor reveals their choices. We got one correct. Yes, the circus definitely goes between the 5G cell tower and mini golf for whatever reasons. I was sure the alien abduction site should go between the mini golf and dive bar. You're drinking, you're gonna be, you know, less able to defend yourself against aliens. And then the aliens wanna play golf after. Whatever the reasons, that's what we went with. For the tiles that didn't match, we're still going to add them to the city, but you add them diagonally next to other tiles. And what you're trying to do is have as many complete trees as possible. Those are your points. So this does nothing but set us up for the future. The deputy mayor now becomes mayor. They take the screen. The player to their left now decides where we're going to build next. Let's say we go here. We do this again. The deputy mayor pulls out three new tiles. 
I'm just gonna put them out here and let's say we match perfectly. Daycare, fish shop, skyscraper, the mayor reveals their choices and they're exactly what you put out there. Super, we fill in all these spots, which makes not, lots of nice completed trees. In addition, you get a bonus for matching exactly. You draw one of these tiles at random or you can look as you wish. They're all normal locations on one side and a little less normal on the other. And you add it to the city. So where do we want to put a cattle ranch? Let's say to buy the Chinese buffet and the alien abduction sites. That seems to make sense. Sure. But wherever you put this down, we completed two more trees, but you can never put a tile in this line from this colored side. It's just now off limits. So limits where you can go in the future after getting a bonus. And the first time you have a perfect match, you add a new cone and a new tile. And now each turn you're going to draw four buildings and add four new tiles to town, ideally building up complete spaces. You do this over six rounds and then you count the number of completed trees and that's your score. And you look on a chart to see how well you did. If you care about such things, all of these tiles are double sided, not just the bonus tiles. So if you get something that you are uncomfortable with, you don't want a tattoo parlor in town, you can flip it over. You get a park a uh, robot factory. You don't like that. Uh, there's some other stuff in here that people might be like, eh, I'm not sure I want to play with this for my kids. Uh, don't know if I can find any right now. Excavation site, graffiti tunnel. Hmm. Alcoholics Anonymous. All right. Lots of fun stuff in here. Local newspaper, condominiums, thrift shop, and so on. Do six rounds and then see what you get. I played Link City four times on our view copy from Blue Orange Games, which is releasing the game in North America, twice with two players and twice with four. And I've had a blast each time, whether we did well or poorly. I mean, it was half and half on those results as well. In one game, we matched, strangely, only the yellow cone all six rounds. So we never had the fourth cone. So we're only drawing three tiles and only got one correct every single round. So we had a very small set of connected tiles and then lots of holes that we were trying to fill in, but just couldn't manage to do it. It was interesting how that worked out. And we had other games where we were in the 40s, lots of tiles. We had many bonuses. It was wonderful. It was wonderful either way because it's all about trying to connect with your fellow players and then argue about why this should go with here and that should go there and so on. It's gameplay is similar to trash talk in that in that game, you're getting words and you're assigning objects to it, but you don't really have as many connections, mental connections to a coin and a bow tie and a paper clip. Those three objects connecting to words, it's a little more nebulous than Link City where you have some real associations with the buildings that are going up and what they should be next to and what they should not be next to, right? Those lots are assigned, so you don't have a choice. They're going somewhere, but you're trying to think both obviously and like the other person and try to make those matches. Where is someone going to be putting up a coal mine or a haunted mansion, a massage parlor, a doomsday bunker, co-working space? There's so many things in here. Castle, hourly motel, that might be one you flip over when you're playing with kids. All the tiles are double-sided, so you can decide if you don't want to put down the hourly motel as the mayor, okay, you're putting down the library instead. Your choice, all right? Or you just take that tile out. There's plenty of others that you can use in place of those or without those. So you're trying to make those matches and it's just, interesting to see where things go and how people make those connections. And with more people, of course, there's more arguments about what should go where. Sometimes it's a slam dunk where you're like, the playground's going next to the circus. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Or the daycare center is next to the playground. Okay, but sometimes you'll get a job center, okay? And a bakery and the rage room. Mm, one of those rooms where you go and break things. Where are those going to go necessarily? There may not be a good place for the rage room, but you will find a place because it has to go somewhere for some reason. 
And it's just fun experience making that happen and trying to have those arguments and you score points and then you say, whatever, I don't care about the score. It doesn't matter at the end because it's all just about finding that connection with other people. And it's interesting because I've only played with people I know, family members and friends. I have a hard time trying to imagine playing this with strangers just because I don't think I would make quite the connection with them. I feel like I should try it just so I know for sure. But part of it is thinking about what the people I know would want to put somewhere. And sometimes it's as a joke, but you know that's a joke that they would make and you think that would make sense as well. And so you go along those lines and you find out you're correct and it feels good. And with random people, I have a hard time feeling like I'd make the same connection to them or at least have the same feeling or meaning of what I'm doing. And I guess I need to try that just to figure it out for myself because the design works really well. The rules are straightforward. You get into playing right away, right? Make someone else the mayor if you know the game because you can be deputy mayor. Sometimes the choice of where you go as deputy mayor is the most important thing because are you setting yourself up for success? Are you putting the cones near things that are too alike? Or do you make choices for this is by the cemetery and this is by the skyscraper and those are definitely giving you certain feelings of what should go where. And maybe that will help you decipher the choices that the mayor has made. So make someone else the mayor if you are playing for the first time and they get to make that assumption of that choice of where the tile should go, but you're ideally setting them up for success regardless of what they draw. It doesn't always happen, but that would be my suggestion because I think in some ways the mayor's the easier role, right? They're putting things down and then everyone else has to match them. They're the mayor. You're supposed to be matching the mayor, right? So everything works really well in this design by Emilion Alquier. Uh, first released by a French company, Banjo, B-A-N-D-J-O. It's available in German as well. Ideally, it'll be released in other markets because I think it's a lot of fun. I think people will really enjoy it. And sure, I'll have to play it with strangers and see if I get the same vibe off them as I do off people I know. Maybe it's just that I'm playing with people that I like, and this is giving me a good experience with those people I like. It's setting us up for success. Whether we actually score points or not, the game experience is a success and playing with them is enjoyable. And the game is just making that happen. It's a good design to do that. So there you go. Link City.